Shepherd Commander, it is recommended that we recruit Mike the Birdman Dodd for their superior geek knowledge. This would increase our chances of success against the old machines. The Gath consensus has infiltrated this week in Geek.net, and we find it adequate for our needs. Guys, what's going on? You are listening to The Prototype, only on ThisWeekInGeek.net. I'm your host, Mike the Birdman, and, well, we're doing something kind of special, and hopefully this will be the last of this type of thing that we do for quite some time, but I'm not alone as I trek through the next generation of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X coverage. I'm joined with... Alex, the producer. All right, guys, so these two titles we're going to be talking about today is we've actually covered them pretty extensively in the past. We've had about a half-hour discussion on each, but we haven't had a chance to experience them fully on next-generation hardware, as we've had both of these consoles for well over a week now. We are going to be talking about our next-generation experiences with um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion on the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, respectively. So to kind of give you our final review coverage of these next-generation titles, which do support cross-saving, which has been an amazing saving grace during all this, because I really don't know whether I'd want to play through Watch Dogs Legion again, having to restart from scratch. I do think this is a wonderful, uh, innovative tool uh, Very different from the last-generation launch. Yeah, whereas, guess you got to buy the game again, kid, if you want to play it from 360 to Xbox One, uh, which I did that with Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and I I think I got, I got almost everything in Black Flag on the 360, but I didn't get it all on the Xbox One version. I got farther in the PlayStation 4 version, but after a while, I'm like, some of these were just really hard to go back and do. And other yeah. things like Assassin's Creed uh, Rogue, which I uh, almost got all the trophies on PlayStation 3, when the next generation versions came out on Xbox uh, One and PS4, I think I, I played the PS4 version, they didn't include the ability to purchase the Time Saver pack. And I know you might be saying, oh, no, you didn't get to buy some DLC. But it kind of screwed me over in terms of me having all my items that I wanted to do through my playthrough at the start. And you had already, this is not a case of like you playing it for the first time. Yeah, I, I just wanted to feel like I had all the tools at my disposal so I could experience the storyline because I love certain weapons uh, in that game, certain abilities. Plus, I liked doing the naval combat fairly early on, the fight, the big kind of of legendary ships, which I felt Rogue's battles felt a lot... I don't know. I don't know whether I'd call them harder, but they felt more balanced. Whereas Black Flags, there's one battle where you fight these two large galleons and then you kill one and then like another one shows up or something and you're essentially fighting two or three ships and it's really fucking hard. The only reason I won that one was through pure luck and I think I cheesed the fight. Um, So yeah, that was fun. Um, (laughs) So anyway, uh, so yeah, we are going to be talking about these two things. The game I've spent the most time with is Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Xbox Series X. Same here. And and I am having a lot more fun with it now, although, um, full disclosure, I've not yet beaten this game because, holy shit, it is huge. <laughs> and there is so much to do. There is but... so much to do in, in all, all these games. It's interesting how many rpg like or rpg games came out within a three-week period and these games are all like what 50 to like 90 hours to do 100 percent completions on or more yeah and the cool thing is there's going to be more stuff coming out with the like seasons pass later on down the road um in my experience what i did with you might be asking what are you doing with my time well I did a lot of exploration and I played this with with a fair number of accessibility options on because I really just wanted to experience the story of um, of Eivor and the Raven clan going to ninth century England. And I explored a lot. And I went in there are three difficulty levels, not just a uniform, make everything super easy. 
there's one for exploration there's one for combat and then there's one what was the other one exploration combat and i think for stealth yes to make that easier and then on top of that you have options to uh change things that would be like multiple button presses or like repeated presses to like hold a button mm-hmm. uh for people that might have like dexterity issues i love that they're starting to include that more in games uh you can turn the uh, subtitles on to a ridiculous size to the point where yeah. like, there's not a single tv that you could possibly have where you wouldn't be able to read it yeah like it, it's been nice to be able to have more options for this and i found out that even if you have all the accessibility options on and you, and you tailor this towards a more story-like experience you can't just wander into an area way above your power level and expect to win fights against there are these guys called zealots who are like these roaming boss type enemies and expect to win however me and alex did find you can win against them if you play remarkably smart oh Um, yes (laughs) although from the way i'm playing it right now there's one area of the map where your expected level should be 340 i've turned on these basically they're one hit assassinations but you have to be really clever to to be able to remain hidden the entire time i wiped out an entire base of three of guys who are hundreds of levels above me um but i had a lot of fun like i'm also going around the map collecting all the armor pieces which is really fun i'm collecting all the um abilities which is again really fun um and i found some the puzzles are very well put together yeah, there's one set of puzzles that I like, and I've encountered like three or four of them. They're called the Treasure of Britain, which the end of the puzzle like track is you get Excalibur, which is this mythical two-handed great sword, and you can do some really cool things with it. Will I ever get it? I don't know. Because some of these puzzles, I yeah, I can probably get it. Yeah. It just depends on how much frustration you, I, I want to go through. You may have to wait till there's some people have made a guide for some of the more difficult ones. Yeah, like it, they're they're not hard. They're gonna test you, but that's what what I like about this. Plus, the exploration, unlike Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where you're just chasing map markers, here sometimes some of the side quests are literally just talking with somebody. Like, th- there's one mission, and I use that term remarkably loosely, where you meet this old man, and he's talking to you and he's clearly senile oh at the beginning of the game even yeah you're right no 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 no. this one's probably yeah it's you're in england oh i, I, was, I was thinking of the norway one no, no no there's this old man in england and he's talking about his daughter and he's like oh you finally come home your mother and i loved you so much and you find out his wife has passed away from a sickness and the daughter has written home saying she's a nurse or something She's looking after sick people as well, but she doesn't feel well. So you find out she's passed away and you basically help this old man have a a dementia episode, I guess, by trying to comfort him and listening to him tell the tale of him and his wife falling in love. And the only mission active part of this is you have to move some boxes literally 10 feet from one place to another and just listen to his tale and answer uh, some questions and have him explain how he fooled the Lord by running around the building to make the cows give more milk so they wouldn't die. It's, it's really weird, but it's also really cute. Well, um, well, do you remember there's the guy like, I was thinking of in Norway, you visit him, he thinks he's in England, but he's on a little Island and he's seen. Oh, island. that guy. Yeah. And you, the mission is literally following him around and then till his son shows up and then you have the choice of, letting him uh be at peace living in his own senility by by placating to him or you could be cruel and give him the the harsh reality that he may not accept uh then there's also in uh which town is it again this is in norway early on like giving the variety of missions there's two there's one where you speak to a guy who wants you to take all his earthly possessions and throw them off a cliff while he tells you a story and he's like yeah that he's, like, guy. he's like great my children will have to earn their things you know i don't want them to just get it because i worked for it and he's like all right goodbye and he jumps off the cliff <laughs> you're like what 
he wanted to thank you for your time and jumps off the cliff and then there's uh when you go to the the one town with i guess the guy who's going to become the, the king of all of norway uh mm-hmm. and there's a couple that uh, a woman is upset that her husband doesn't want to have sex with her anymore and they that they could only make love when they were in battle together so they ask you oh, to, they ask you burn to burn down the house burn down their house to to make their loins uh fiery there is an uh, an another uh quest <clears throat> quest that i happened upon you follow this woman up this mountain <clears throat> but you have to fight off wolves cool you do that and she's like and there's this mountain god who in imbues fertility to any who come visit and it's somebody who's hiding in a hut pretending to be a god and if you follow them a little ways off the mountain path they're just lying on a blanket and you hear the dialogue she's like oh it's so big and he's like it, yes it is mighty it imbues fertility <laughs> and it's ridiculous there's this other one this one almost fucked me over i got oh. caught again helping this pregnant woman get somewhere um and you have to, and you almost get ambushed by one of those um wandering side bosses this oh, yeah. level this guy was 280 oof I was level 82. I got him down to one quarter health. So I just got, I'm really good at being able to parry at this game with my like two handed great sword. And um, he killed me in the end. But the second time around, I did that mission. He didn't show up this time. I waited in, in the goddamn bushes, got her up there. And she's like, me and this man can never be together. Our love will never be accepted and then this guy comes out of the bush and he's like oh look i found you and she's like go away our our families will never accept us he's like you know what it doesn't matter i want to be with you and it's kind of cute it's it's a mission that takes a long time because the woman is giving birth so you have to stop constantly to escort her up to the up up to this temple and it's just it's cool and it gives you a fair chunk of experience um yeah, so those have been really fun. Just exploring well, yeah. the world. The kid and the bear. Yes. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh shows up at one point. And this mission surprised me. It's another mission in England. You come across a group of bards. And they're, they say, I am, the, I, I am Keith and I am a bard. And I come to talk of you of this jilted generation. And me and my group of merry men are musical prodigies. You might notice some of the language that that I'm using there. It's the fucking prodigy from the nineties. Yeah, from the nineties, and the mission is called "Smack Thy Bishop." And I was so surprised how clever that was, and I was like, "All right, that's pretty legit." So we did that mission, and I was just remarkably impressed. And the thing uh, you can also do a little bit kind of later on is as you build up your settlement, you can do missions for different kings and everything and grant and get like loyalty. And I just finished one quest line remarkably early. And like I said, I've spent a lot of time just exploring is you get this other uh, Danish clan. And depending on some of the choices that you make, some of these people may join you. You can help expose a traitor. I found out later I fucked up and did the wrong thing. So now (laughs) I'm going to live with the consequences of that. Like, yeah, they're like, yeah, they're loyal to us, but they don't admire us. So I'm waiting for that to come bite me. And 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 yeah, like storyline is more impressive than I thought, especially with the side stories. Technically wise, I've had a chance to check it out uh, both on uh, PlayStation and Xbox and the upgraded Xbox version. So I, what did you think so far of going because you went from the original xbox vcr style to playing it on the x or the the series x did you notice a a big jump in performance yeah actually one of the things that i really noticed was the god rays and ray tracing it looks really spectacular yeah and and it's not like overdone it's not like it's not super dramatic but you'll probably see like draw distance smoothness because you're no longer playing at 30 frames per second you're playing at 60 like you'll notice like 
just the the smoothness of motion of running around and stuff, right? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, one of the things I've noticed is water looks really great. Even r- running out in the English countryside, I, I decided to stop. And if you look down at the camera in the right ways, even the ground looks impressive. Like just like the environment looks great, the clouds and the sky looks great, and loading the weather effects. Like fast it travel, loads really quick. Fast travels so much faster. Like yeah. we're talking like twenty seconds versus a couple minutes. Yeah, like it's marvelous. Or when when I, one of the side bosses beats you and you die, you're back up and running in about ten seconds. One of the things I did notice, though, and this has been a common complaint I've noticed on Reddit and Twitter. Uh, now we did mention auto saving and the game, uh, how you can move your progress from console yeah. to PC, whatever. Sometimes you got these database corrupted errors. I, I didn't personally encounter that. I've encountered this multiple times. I haven't lost progress cause I do multiple saves and I think it loads the local save first and then it talks to the Ubisoft server. Yeah. So it hasn't affected me too badly, but I did get a little freaked out when it said file corrupted. Uh, which which is, yeah, weird, because I was playing it initially, obviously, when it went up to the X, I was playing it there. And then I thought, how is this going to work on PlayStation? I've been playing on PlayStation ever since, because it includes the um, adaptive triggers, which, like, it feels interesting pulling your bow back. Like, there, it, it, it gives it more of an immersive feel. Uh, graphically, it's about the same. It seems a little darker in, on PlayStation, and it might just be the way they they implement their HDR for it. Uh, loading times, I know other things like Digital Foundry have shown off that like loading is a little faster on PlayStation, uh, and the, there's been some fidelity differences. To my eye, and I, I think I have a fairly trained eye, I don't notice a massive difference at all between the, the higher-end versions. But I did notice uh, it's a lot different. Like when it comes to multi-platform games, if they implement a lot of the features of the DualSense controller, it can make it feel truly next gen. So I feel like sometimes if you're trading off graphics, like you, like on paper, the Xbox is a little more powerful. But if the experience is better on PlayStation, it, that's where you're going to have to determine, you know, whether or not it feels better. Uh, and I, I've been playing since then on the PlayStation version, and I haven't encountered any issues. And I was just, like, flabbergasted that I could take a game I was playing on the original Xbox One and import the save almost immediately when it connected to the servers on PlayStation 5. And I was like, what? <laughs> it just works? <laughs> yeah, I was really... I, I, I hope more more studios and more developers take advantage of this i think that's a wonderful idea especially since now everything all these systems have to be connected to the net anyway so like you're you're very going to be hard pressed to find a game that is completely offline yeah so that was impressive thoroughly enjoyed that so um our final review of assassin's creed valhalla i like it i i think the combat was weightier in assassin's creed odyssey as as i did mention previously but storyline wise and exploration wise i do like this world better i think in a lot of ways but i think cassandra was the more interesting protagonist but that's not to say uh avor's story is not good either this yeah this to me is game of thrones meets ghost of tsushima so there for the little glitches here and there that we might have had it's like an eight out of ten for me yeah, I, I I don't think that's an unfair it, assessment. Especially on PlayStation where you have those adaptive triggers and, and like the, the haptic like the new controller makes the difference. It's like a seven and a half on on uh the Xbox platform to me. It just gets mm-hmm. a little more for having those features on the PlayStation. All right. So our next thing that we're gonna give our final uh review to is another title that I talked about uh, pretty close to release, and that is Watch Dogs Legion. Now, I didn't play as much on Next Gen because I did beat the game on my original VCR Xbox, but I did complete a couple full quest lines uh, on the Xbox Series X, so I got at least four or five hours here. Um, Watch Dogs Legion, you know what? In some ways, it looks really, really, really good 
but I also, I just saw this game for like 40 out <clears throat> 40 hours on the VCR and I'm just, let's say, okay, it looks about the same. I mean, reflections look great. Yeah. The, the neon looks great. The ray tracing and next gen implementation of the lighting engine is much more significant here than on Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed already was working on a very optimized engine. And even on the older systems, uh, the frame rate, it was pretty much locked to 30, even on the S, the old S. So there, see, this is this is the problem we're going to have. Because when we say S, it can mean two different systems now. <laughs> but uh, on the Xbox One platform, it, it was pretty consistent. Whereas uh, you've seen Watch Dogs, and you said that you had encountered a fair amount of glitches on, on the VCR model, right? Mm-hmm. And I imagine, uh, like for me, I'm you know playing it on uh, the PlayStation Five. You were playing it likely. I'm assuming you upgraded and played it on the the Series X. Yes. So you probably uh, can speak better to how much of uh, not just a visual upgrade, but like stability. Was there like better AI and stuff? Did it seem to function better? Actually, I had a worse time. Really? This, actually, yeah. This actually surprised me. So there are these missions that you can do for. Um, bagley and they're they involve bare knuckle boxing leagues and you go out and do a series of um kind of melee fights and basically they're escalating difficulty they'll throw something at you there's one of the ones where i encountered and this is where where i encountered my problem is you fight a woman in a gas mask and she throws smoke bombs but it functions essentially as tear gas and you have to kick her ass before the tear gas knocks knocks you out. So I fought through her two flunkies. Cool. Did that. Got to her. Beat her in the first round. Um, got to the second round. Knocked her out. She wouldn't die. Or sorry, she died, but it wouldn't register the kill. So, okay, I'll reload the mission. Reloaded the mission. Um... Uh, and then her body was still on the floor and she respawned in. Oh boy. So, so I was like, okay, that's fucky. Um, that happened again where it crashed. That happened not in this game to me, but when we were playing Assassin's Creed, uh, one of the mini bosses, one of the, the, uh, I guess acolytes or whatever you call them, the people on horseback, I killed the person and they got stuck in the ground and it wouldn't give me the reward for beating them. And I reloaded the save, the save multiple times and even rebooted. The person's still there. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be able to get on that playthrough uh, the ding for killing all of them. So th- until they patch it. So th- I'm assuming this is a, a glitch with next gen patching. Yeah, like it was just kind of annoying. But e- e- eventually I was able to clear all these next gen or sorry, all all these uh, bare knuckle fights, but there were times where I'd have kind of lockups. There were other times um, I would have enemies run around in in circles when I was fighting uh, clan Kelly hideouts. Um, One series of missions, which it kept, you have to find these memories, um, and I guess I, 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 I won't spoil it, but you have to find locations connected via photograph. Those were a pain in the ass, um, and finding these locations can be, they're not difficult, they're annoying, because you're, you're given just enough information to kind of figure it out, but other times, eh. I could imagine this being a little harder on the older systems because I wouldn't have had as much detail um, to yeah. find things. Yeah, the, it, it's, it's, it is like j- like the, jumping a significant amount into the... like If you're not a PC gamer, it seems like a much bigger jump with these games. But, uh, because you and I, we're not somebody... We, we don't have $2,000 gaming PCs. No. So, like, we've got the same video card. It can do 1080. Our newer cards can do 1080p at high settings for most games. Maybe even ultra in some cases. But what we have won't do 1440 or 4K because it's just sort of where we're console people. So, seeing the upgrade, like on PlayStation Five, uh, it's dramatic enough. I encountered all the glitches and that, and it's 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 the kind of stuff where these are first generation next gen titles, as in like they, a lot of the kinks haven't been worked out. Uh, 
I, I saw some of the ridiculous things that happened with the AI with you on uh, the last gen one. I was wondering, did you have a bunch of the crazy stuff like people running into walls and stuff? Or Yeah, I had that happen a few times. I'd also have firefights that would get wildly out of control. I didn't encounter any massive freezes. I know when I played on, on my VCR, there's one thing where you fight in this construction place, but it's kind of like a plaza at the same time. And there's a place in the middle where you can spawn drones. I had that section freeze up on me multiple times on the VCR. Here, it didn't happen. In fact, I didn't do a lot of drone combat this time around. I did just a lot of normal firefights. Um, And I didn't encounter many AI goofs. I had a couple times where they would just fire uh, at a position I was no longer at. But um, overall, it does perform better on the Series X. I noticed I didn't have any stutters in the draw distance where I would see cars just moving one or two frames at a time. That was smoothed out. Getting above the skyline looked great. When I took one of my uh, construction drones and flew up at night, I got by the eye in London and just looked out over the city and saw all the cars moving. Particle effects and lighting and lasers look way better. Yeah, like it looks great, but again, that's not to say there isn't some technical hiccups, but I hate to say it, it's an Ubisoft game. You come to kind of expect it. It's nowhere near as bad as a Bethesda game because Bethesda games, it's patch upon patch upon patch. I find Ubisoft, you get a patch here and there and it's usually fixed. I'm willing to bet that some of these, like the hiccups that we're encountering by Christmas time, they'll be gone. Yeah, so uh, I know um, Watch Dogs Legion drops its multiplayer patch in a couple weeks. I know the I know it ties directly into Assassin's Creed. They have a character who is an assassin uh, is going to be joining Watch Dogs Legion, and I know there's a character who can hack people uh through biosynthetic implants or some bullshit like that it looks cool either way i will go back and play the watchdogs legion legion season pass material uh will we do full coverage on it i'll probably do one of those little five minute reviews like i did for uh ghost recon breakpoint so stay tuned for that so ultimately both games are pretty good if i had to recommend one over the other i would recommend assassin's creed it's a longer play experience um it's a little more just polished think, right now too yeah i just think it's a better game if i had to pick one or the other plus um it's just got the fact that it has a main focus narrative is the main reason i would pick it whereas yeah. Watch Dogs legion it's sort of the it can be any man's story or like in mine as i mentioned in my previous review um my headcanon story for my Albion security contractor was much more interesting than the story that I was given in the game where I had my guy William or Kingsley Billingley or something like that. He's uh, this South African uh, guy who worked for Albion. I recruited him. I was able to walk into 95% of the places in the game with my uniform tear it up with a light machine gun and i had a extra melee weapon that i was really powerful with so and i took less damage i had all buffs no negatives um so that made the game really easy but like i said fun game yeah absolutely. i know there are some black friday sales coming for this i know there's a bundle you can get both of these games at a really good price that's fairly worth it so uh yeah but if, if you could only pick one assassin's creed i think is the better the better play right now so uh anyway guys um any final thoughts from you alex yeah because we were saying this is sort of our our next gen um upgrade talk (laughs) uh i there's one other title i received uh earlier for review that i thought was going to get a a a ps5 release later down the line uh but it, it is physically but the digital edition was a day one upgrade and that was uh i reviewed uh i think in october uh wrc9 one of those uh uh, rally racers that's like a simulator racer and it was a uh, pretty good for what it was uh in that style and, you know it's they're hard because they're very you know realistic physics and uh when i booted up my ps5 it automatically gave me a upgrade to the ps5 version that was already out uh download installed that and 
I can say, you know, slight visual upgrade, not a whole ton. Uh, loading time's obviously faster. But again, the big thing was the upgrade to the controller features. With uh, I'm finding more and more that multi-platform titles uh, are going to be, regardless of visual fidelity, almost more fun to play on the PlayStation because uh, of the advantages they can have with the DualSense controller. In this case, when you're racing in it, like you... It, putting your finger on the gas you know as the trigger you can feel it get harder to press as you pull down as until you start changing gears and as the gears change the pedal gets lighter because it's no longer struggling as hard and also if you overgun it and let's say you're you know your car will backfire and, and you'll kick something out the back of the exhaust when it does that the trigger just bottoms out on you and you can feel like your car is backfiring and if you like bump into the side of the road if you bump the right side of the car, only the right side of the controller rumbles. You bump the left side of the car, only the left side rumbles. If you start spinning out, let's say you hit a curb and spin, you'll hear the tire screech, and it'll even it'll do surround sound around you if you have surround sound. And where it would normally come to like the back of you, like you have your front left, front right, back left, back right, but the center back, as it sweeps around, will actually sweep the sound through the controller. Oh, that's really so cool. So the controller becomes another one of the channels of the of the audio. And I was like, for something that you might not expect them to put a ton of effort into, it, it, you know, a racing game that's not like the, like, it's not like it's, it's Gran Turismo, right? Like, it's not like it's designed for the police PlayStation as like a flagship. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised and just overall made me play it a lot more. That was, uh, uh, Nacon put it out. They're also known for putting out those, uh, licensed higher end, uh, controllers. So I'm like, if they're putting this kind of effort into their games, I'm wondering, like, are we going to start seeing, like, uh, third-party high-end PlayStation 5 DualSense controllers from them and, like, Scuff? That'll be something to, I guess, watch out for in the next year or so. Cause, yeah, uh, I'm actually surprised Scuff hasn't put out something. Because I'll say one thing here, moving up from last gen to this gen, the battery life on the PS5 controller is not the greatest. When you have, if you enable all the features, like, you want the microphone on and you're talking through it and you have... Uh, the speaker volume up on there for some of those features, haptics on full, adaptive triggers on, you will only get about seven hours of play, which is about where we were sitting with the DualShock 4 when it first came out before they had a revision. Even though the battery is bigger, it's just got a lot more going on. Uh, turn all that stuff off and you're getting about 11 hours, but you want to compare that to, you know, if you pick up like an Xbox Elite controller, you got what, like 30, 40 hours? Yep. Yeah. Uh, same with the, the, the switch pro controller, you're at 30 or 40. Like I would be willing to pay 150 or $200 if I could get a controller that lasted 30 hours. That was a bit heftier, for, uh, build quality wise, maybe had like wider grips that for bigger hands on, on the PlayStation. So some, some of these third party companies that had deals for PS4, you know, I think we're going to have to keep our eyes open because, uh, I've had to multiple times while reviewing games, you know, my batteries died during a playthrough and I've had to get up and luckily I've got the the charging dock and I just grab a second controller. And I will say this, if you get the official charging dock, it does quick charge. And within about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, you get a full charge, whereas it was almost double that on the old systems. Mm -hmm. So that's that's sort of my final thoughts. I just want, thought I'd mention that because uh, instead of doing like a full review, it's just sort of a, a slight upgrade to that game. And I, I wasn't expecting that version to be available at launch because everywhere has the retail games out. And I realized like Devil May Cry was a day one digital and then you got to wait till December to buy it physically. So there are you're seeing a lot of that. And that's probably, you know, COVID related. They couldn't get the production runs out ready. But there's actually more games to buy digitally than there are available physical right now. Mm hmm. So that's, that's uh, my final thoughts. <laughs> we will also have some additional notes at the beginning of our Twig regular show uh, regarding some other materials regarding next uh, generation console stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, I will say as my final thoughts on this, and this is more uh, reflective of the hardware, people are having some teething problems with yes. this console. Um, I've heard multiple problems with PlayStation 5s. I'm hearing multiple problems with Xbox Series Xs. We haven't heard S because not as many people have it, and I kind of get the feeling that it'll trickle down. Whatever your problems you're having with the X, you're probably also having with the S because it's basically the same hardware, just, you know, power. The operating systems, it's the firmware that's the issues right now. It's not a problem with, like, the hardware being bad. It's with 
It's like they launched Windows without doing as much bug testing as they should have. Yeah, so we'll find out. We'll talk about this a little bit more in our next uh, Twig thing, because I presume this is coming out today. Um, so anyway, uh, for the prototype, we will have more content coming up as we lead up to our holiday gift guide releasing on December 7th. I'm sure we'll do one or two more shows. Uh, so until next time for the prototype, we have been Alex, the producer. I've been Mike, the Birdman, saying be excellent to each other. Catch you guys again next time right here on thisookinggeek.net.